please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Chicken movie thoughts. I suppose I should start with a few of those nice gags and good uses of perspective and such. I think the, the basically the best gags are in that last little bit it's on the it's right before he gets on the boat. There might be some on the boat as well, but at that party and the there's that bit where you've got that fancy dressed guy. You know, every, everyone's in a suit and tie at this party. And this guy, you see this, it's, it's a medium shot. You see from the side this sort of this hallway. You see from the side the, the, the door. And the, the guy is right in front of the door. And the door opens and just, the guy gets shot. You know, great little gag. It's, it's quick, it's un, unexpected. The, the stuff with the, the the elevator when he shoots that host dude, man, he puts a lot of bullets in him. And after shooting him a ton of times, walking away, ding! The elevator doors, that's really good. Now, the... Gotta love how the... I'm already into the bad. I... I really am trying to talk about the positives, but anyway, you gotta love how the Sheik, I guess, actually knew somehow which girl Brian was like, you know, which one was his daughter. I mean, I suppose maybe like a gun was trained on the, and made to say which one or something, but yeah, okay, fair enough. The perspective stuff, I liked the, the, the way they shot the actual abduction with this basically first, you, you see a man jumping around through through the window, and you you don't you don't know that she's about to be taken, and there's that phone conversation between father and daughter, and then suddenly she's taken, and you just see these three or four guys, and you see it very fast. That's that's how you do it, you know. It's 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 not really an action scene, and it's not this sort of it. A lot of action movies have this kind of action scene where you very sort of where, where you really get a good look at the bad guys and then I, in the review I compare it to it's, it's obvious to compare this movie to Commander the Arnie movie I'm not going to be spoiling that movie in that movie very early on when the, the capture is done and then there are these various goons who have names and slight qualities to them that would allow you to recognize them again. And they might like have a line, or they might do something or say something. And that's the, you know, the, the that 80s or 90s and 90s kind of action movie with, for example, an abduction, that will have these characters where you're saying, ah, oh, I can't wait to see that guy bite the dust. And this is not that, and I'm, I'm glad it's, it was fun, it, it was good cheesy fun while that lasted, but this is a new, this is a different way to approach that. And I, I really like that. You don't get to see what they look like. And so it is this kind of thing of, like the, there's the, the mystery to it. And at first you don't know what language they're speaking and who they are at all. I guess if you, if you didn't watch the trailer, 
before watching a movie, and you just sit down and watch this, you don't know at first that it's for the, the sex trade. You, it, it could have been something else. I mean, maybe, you can probably figure it out from today. So it's, it's often, or at least that's what's often reported, that it's this kind of, you know, yeah. And the, sex slavery and yeah this you you have uh, yeah so so she she's the, the these guys grab Amanda and then she is, is told you know get get under the under the bed and I, I like that he he levels with her you will be taken it's, it's that they they're not leaving there without you there's there's nothing that we can do, but I will come and find you. And and her reaction is quite good. I like Maggie Grace. I don't I don't love her, but I, I think she does pretty well. And I think sort of think that coming off of Lost, in this she she has that sort of virginal kind of still daddy's little girl quality to her. I think she does that quite well. You know, when she says mommy or daddy and I love you and she's all like excited about this trip to Paris, you believe it. You believe that this girl is 17 and this is a big deal for her. And and it's the other end of the spectrum entirely from Shannon on Lost. So, yeah, I, I, I really like that the reaction, you know, you will be taken, and she, I, I can't quite replicate it, but, yeah, anyway, Re recreated, but she does this sort of whimper, and, and you really tell, oh man, that, it hurt to hear that, but she, she's still, she's holding to, I mean, she's not screaming her head off, because that was still, it's, it's sort of a suppressed whimper, and I, I, I thought that was nice, there was a little nuance to it, it was quite good. And you almost think that she won't be taken, and then suddenly she's pulled away from the camera. And the camera is the audience's eye, you, you, that's what we perceive, that's, everything that the camera films directly is how we and, and it doesn't even cut to them showing us. We, we do later see her standing there struggling, but that's once he's sort of re retracing her steps and trying to figure out exactly how it happened, you know, get, getting a sense of p picking up any trace he can to, to any, uh, any leads, you know. And yeah, it, it works really well. It's, it's very uncomfortable to, to the viewer that the, the character that we are empathizing with is dragged away from the camera, out of our sight. And it's that, it's, it's also that she's being dragged out of Liam Neeson's reach. And then the next time we see her is when he's retracing her steps. And then we don't see her again, unless you count that still picture that he took until the very end, when she's at the auction. That's a really great... That's, that's very effective. There aren't even like flashbacks or cut to her and see how she's doing kind of thing. I, I really like how the movie uses perspective in that way. Never cut to the, the person who's doing... It, it can work. It depends on the movie you're making. But for this, it was perfect that they did it. Now, the, the movie has an astounding amount of coincidences, just line up very, very neat and tidy for Liam to be able to piece this all together, and it, it all just works out the exact right way and all this stuff. He, he can just keep, you know, no, no matter how... Yeah, he, he keeps having somewhere to go and somehow finding... He actually managed to pick the guy, the, the actual Marco, to 
to read aloud the good luck thing, and yeah, which obviously was just purely so that he could, well, I guess, yeah, to, to be sure that they were the guys who were, actually, didn't he already know that those were the guys? No, I guess he didn't know until then. Okay, fair enough. And he shoots everybody. And that, that bit had some good stuff. Actually, one of the best things, I, I thought that the fight, I guess the final fight, really, the, the bidding guy, like the, like the right hand man, I guess, of the Sheik, with the knife, that was really good. I wish the movie had had more of that, because really, people are watching this movie for the entertainment. People are watching this movie to see Liam Neeson kick ass. It, not to say that it doesn't deliver him kicking ass. I just wish that it didn't so often pass by so quickly that you couldn't even really appreciate what he was doing. I feel that it does worse at that than the Bourne sequels. And I, as much as I love Bourne, I, I will admit that the Bourne sequels all also went really fast. But there, you kind of got this sense of, you, you sort of, as, as he went along, you gradually figured out, oh, that's what he's doing, and this is why I did that. Ah, of course, makes perfect sense. And you, you could really, you, you were really cheering for him. And this, I mean, I wanted the daughter to get found. Part of it is that Brian is such a despicable character. Anyway, the... Yeah, I'll, I'll delve a little bit into that. I'll explain why. But, but yeah, I just didn't... Often didn't feel like... I don't know, I guess it was basically he was just... seeing what leads panned out and working really hard to find his daughter. There wasn't really a distinct kind of... And I didn't feel as much... You know, Bourne is pure guerrilla warfare. He's... He's fighting the, 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 the CIA who are chasing him. And in this is just kind of... It's the action movie shtick. It hasn't changed that much. It's just this different, different approach. The the Jason Bourne style approach. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying it was invented with Bourne. Although actually, I suppose Greengrass with the Supre Bourne supremacy might have been pretty much the first. Excuse me, action movie to do that sort of thing. Not sure about that. But, but yeah, it, the, yeah, I suppose I could talk about Brian's character. For one thing, he shoots a perfectly innocent woman. Did that French cop's wife know that he was corrupt? If she did, it makes it slightly more okay because she was, well, what's that word? She was an accessory, but if not, and I, it didn't seem to me like she knew. He, yeah, she was all like, what is he talking about? And then she gets shot. Okay, so it's just a flesh wound. It still doesn't make it okay. Why didn't he go directly for the French cop? That I can respect. He's the guy doing something. And then you have him torturing the guy. I, I cannot wait for movies to stop having good guys torture get the bad guys for information. Studies show that you're much more likely to get good results by other tests, you know, tried and true methods of interrogation. It's still interrogation. But he's 
for one thing, if you put someone in extreme amounts of pain, they might lie to you for if, if they're fanatical enough. If, if you're proving to them that you're as bad as they've been told you are, they're not very likely to help you out. For another, if they don't know anything, you're not going to find out by torturing them. Unless what they tell you doesn't pan out. And then you've already tortured them. But because they, they might just tell you something just to get you to stop. So, yeah. Anyway, he tortures that guy. Doesn't quite find out if he's a witch or not. Because, you know, maybe he should just throw him in some water. See if he drowns or swims. And then it'll, then it'll be God's will. Because torture is okay as long as, you know, good Christians and all. And... And the... the it's, what really irks me is that the movie actually admits that torture doesn't always work. He has him say, oh, it's you know counterproductive if you're what is it, pulling off fingernails because the, the oh the you turn off the turn on the light switch and nothing worked because it was third world countries and stuff. And then it's still it's in a scene that's saying that torture works. And and yeah the. the the movie doesn't make it seem like Brian is at all going to... Then I could respect it. If, if the movie ended with Brian donating to a fund, or starting a fund, or something that would find out what the best way to prevent human trafficking. Here's a hint. It's not keeping prostitute, you know, sex work completely illegal because that pushes his own, pushes it underground and underground is where human trafficking thrives. So yeah. Yeah, if, if it actually said, but nope, it's just his little girl and then oh, what he did, he did get Amanda back and yeah, what was it? Did she die of too much drug? Yeah, they were messing up for for being like you know these human traffickers and they're you know they they've been doing this for a while. They sure don't know how much drugs to use. They they kill that. Was that Amanda? I can't even because he doesn't really say her name. Or we're supposed to be able to recognize her. I I can't recognize her. Maybe it's me. I don't know. But yeah, they, they give her too much drugs, don't they? Kill her by, like, overdose or something like that. I do respect that at least it's not, it's not Kim being quite stupid enough. It's, it's Amanda messing it up. It's Amanda saying, oh yeah, this is where we live, and yeah, we'll take a cab with you, and you know, oh yeah, we live up on the, was it fourth floor, fifth floor, something like that. I think she said fifth, but then the, the subtitles for him talking on the cell, excuse me, said fourth, anyway. That, yeah, it's kind of, I would hope that not too many young girls are that careless, but as far as I understand, it is at least partially true. It is this, you know, they, they have these, they, they basically charm them and treat them really nice at, at first, and then, yeah, just, just getting enough information. So it, it's apparently very accurate with that, and I really respect the movie for that. The... The characterization of the wife. I like Famke, Fam, Fam, Famke Jan, Janssen. Ah, man, I probably butchered her name. And Janssen is actually... Is, is she, like, Scandinavian? Janssen sounds like... Norwegian, almost could be Danish. It's it's got that little twinge where, to to us Danes, it sounds like 
how we pronounce the name if we were drunk. So yeah, that's Swedish or Norwegian, that's their languages. Anyway, I'm getting off topic with that. I like her. And it has nothing to do with my opinion of her, but the character is just intolerable. I really, I can't even, I can barely understand that she actually took the role. I, I can't, I, I don't know what would possess someone to take a role that paints their entire gender, or that, or at least that, yeah, I'd, actually I'd say their entire gender. It's, it's that kind of, you know, she's, she's the boring, overprotective mother kind of thing, with, with the party, you know, and then she's, like, yelling at her ex-husband, and she's being totally unreasonable, and she won't let her ex-husband spend any quality time with their daughter, and all this stuff, and it's just, ah, uh, I can't, I, I, I can never comprehend what makes people play a role that paints the, that, that type of person in a bad light, when it isn't like, it's, it's, I get it if it's like a, I don't know. Now, actually, I, even if it's like a, a, a stereotype, unless it's a joke, unless it's very clearly we're just making fun of this bad stereo, stupid stereotype, but yeah, anyway, every single, every single scene with her is just, especially when they have her speak, because they just make sure that she is just this heartless monster that is just, you know what? Divorces are hard, and they they really hurt all parties involved, in ex except in very rare instances, I suppose. So how about you actually show that nuance, that uh, that aspect to it? It's not just yeah, it sucks to be a divorced husband, but you know what? It might just suck to be a d d d divorced wife as well. Even if they got custody, you know, they'd... And, and this thing, ah, oh, she never understood how hard it was, and I sacrificed so much for the... the you know, I, I respect the... Sort of the, the spies and the various characters who have this job that means that they can't be a good family person who actually admit that, whether it's before, whether it's like saying, I can't start a family because I know I won't be able to be there for my family, or it's after and they admit, because of my job, I could not be there for my family. And it's like, they, it's, it's on them. Because, you know what, it was your job, it was, you should have realized, or at least one, if, if you couldn't realize before, then once it happened, once you were in this situation where it really sucked because of your job, then you know what, admit that it is that it was your job. You can't just expect to waltz back in and say, well, it's the, the job's gone, so now I can spend all this quality time. But just, you gotta actually understand where the other person is coming from, and this movie clearly does not. It, it's that, they just think that women are horrible, in various different ways. You know, the, the ex-wife is a bitch, the, the daughter is ignorant, the daughter's best friend is downright stupid, and yeah, the Basically, everyone but the ex-wife, every female in this movie but the ex-wife, is a victim in some form or fashion. Even the French guy's wife is a victim of Brian. Does that more or less cover it? 
there were some moments near the end where I really felt like the shooting, like the, the bad guys had no aim. They just could not shoot straight at all. I have no idea how they managed to miss him. Especially one of the guys had like a submachine gun and still managed to miss him. I, yeah, I, I have no idea how that quite happened. That, that felt like it wasn't an action scene that didn't need to be there. But it felt like they were trying to make it, to, trying to sort of stage a more classical shootout, and it just didn't, it didn't work. Because if if I had seen something like that in a John Woo movie, it would have been par for the course. You know, I love John Woo. I love the way he, this the his aesthetic. But this movie is not that, and yeah, it it seems like it was something trying to do that. At times, Brian seemed basically superhuman. Didn't he get run over by a car at one point? And just, and he's just perfectly fine. It, it, it is a difficult balance to tread. I also talked about that with Jason Bourne and the, especially the uh, two sequels, uh, Supremacy and Ultimatum, that it's you, you have to be careful. That, you know, Bourne. At times, seemed psychic. Brian seems just like not maybe not quite psychic, but at least sort of like he has superhuman reflex. There are a few times where they actually have stuff happen to him, and that's really good. I I love when he gets dragged out of the car by that African American guy who. African French guy, perhaps, who uh, I hate correctness, who was working with the Peter guy, and you know that that's a great moment. That is also because they needed him to lose Peter for a little bit so that they could run down the busy highway. Because it's it's completely unexpected, the and and it actually shows that. They can hit Brian for for most of the movie that it doesn't feel like they can either with fists or with bullets, and yeah, there are just times where no matter how he might, no matter how bad a situation he is in, he's going to somehow get out of it with yeah. The, the part where they knocked him out and then just handcuff him to a steam pipe. Yeah, brilliant move there. That's just the basement of the party. Do they not have cars? Could they not have driven him somewhere? Did they really need to know what he... They actually downright say, you know, that's okay, so you're clearly not him, so who are you? Actually, that doesn't matter who you are. Then why did you leave him there? Why is he still in your house, dude? How stupid are you? Why? I would instantly have had him driven away. Just have one of those goons. I mean, they have like, I don't know, at least half a dozen goons around that he, that he then knocks out or kills. Have at least one of them drive him away somewhere, you know, I don't know, you know, put a, put a sock in his mouth, tie another uh, sock around his, yeah, I've put a, a disturbing amount of thought into this, I will admit that. Yeah, handcuff his hands, I don't know, I guess tie up his, tie his legs together, put him in the trunk of a car, Drive him away. He, he won't be able to make noise, particularly. Drive him a, a bit away, then find out who he is, what he can do, what is... Yeah, what, what the deal is. It Just leaving him there is just idiotic. I'm also not entirely convinced that he could would actually be able to pull down the 
steam pipe quite like that so that it would not not that just to make steam come out of it, but so that he could get loose like that. I suppose that more or less covers it. Yes. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.